Okay, everyone, uh, just introducing myself uh, quickly again. Uh, I I'm Arian from Brazil. Uh, I worked uh, in a team here in the Universidade, University Federal of Paraná. It's a university in the south of Brazil, and uh, we worked in a project, uh, most uh, of a project related to a phylogeny tool that uh, it's called SWEEP. Um, most of some of the people in my team work with the, with me in this tool, and then we decided to to present it to you. So as an alternative to other um, um, phylogeny tools. Well, uh, talking a bit about uh, SWIP, uh, its uh, paper was uh, published uh, last January this year. So uh, we worked most in, on it most of the last year, and uh, the the tool is basically uh, a tool to solve an issue we have with in phylogeny, which is the time-consuming um, execution uh, required to perform alignment alignment techniques such as BLAST or BLAST-B or any other techniques uh, which require alignment. Uh, when you use a lot of tools, a lot of sequences, sorry, uh, if, if, if you use it, use them as um, nucleotides or amino acids, uh, it, it, may, it can take a lot of time to process to process and uh, sometimes, oops, sorry, uh, I think, oh, here, sorry. Uh, and it takes, it may take too much time to process these uh, sequences. So um, this, uh, this tool came to help us in this uh, activity. So with it, we can compare genes and organisms uh, uh, sequences and, and make some ancestry, ancestry analysis. Okay, so uh, the main goal of the tool is to avoid the, um, sorry, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> the main goal of the tool is to avoid uh, the post-processing -process co cost we have with the regular alignment techniques. So this, uh, for this, we developed a tool called uh, uh, Sweep that's used to uh, perform alignment-free technique uh, it's not the only one in the market. There are a lot of tools uh, in this group at the moment, but uh, we were able to develop this one uh, to address some uh, issues that other tools, uh, other alignment tools have, alignment free tools have uh, to uh, execute. So for instance, uh, what we do in the tool is basically, um, create a summary of the sequence information. Uh, and then we generate a, re a mathematical representation of them, of, of all the sequences uh, reported to the software. And after that, um, we uh, reduce the noise generated by um, the other alignment-free techniques. So basically this is, uh, the, the brown box here is a gap we have with the other tools, which is the addition of noise. Uh, that's the main problem we have with alignment-free techniques uh, today, and we try to address this problem. I'm not sure if I'm talking too fast or if I'm being, if you can hear me okay. The sound quality is great. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, so uh, with our tool then, um, here uh, I created a scheme just to explain how the tool works. So it is a, vec a vectorial representation of the data. So uh, we perform, with the, we firstly take all the sequences uh, presented to the software. Uh, they are aligned with a mask uh, of size. This example I'm using here is a mask 110. One one, uh, where one the ones represent the the um, amino acid or the nucleotides that will be used by the tool. It is zero represents the amino acid we uh, will ignore um, as a gap um, as as a gap reserve, and then we apply this slide window to all the sequences. After that, uh, we generate a binary matrix. Uh, representation uh, from uh, presence and absence. So uh, we make um, um, 
dimensionality reduction here. So we take only the important information from the sequences and use it as uh, to represent it. And after that, sorry, we have uh, this uh, projection, uh, which we call, which is called orthonormal projection, uh, which is a mathematical projection uh, to, to uh, represent, to generate numbers to represent those sequences in a way that can be, we can use it as uh, in, um, to generate uh, phylogeny trees or even to uh, apply artificial intelligence on the data. So it's, it's a simple process, it's a mathematical process, but it, it, showed, uh, uh, it showed itself uh, really effective to um, uh, help in uh, showing homology between sequences. So the ap applications, as I've said, uh, are mostly phylogeny, uh, but uh, we are using at the moment, uh, uh, Monique, which is in my group, is using at the moment uh, to, uh, as, a fe as feature entry to machine learn uh, tool, uh, to machine learn applications such as classification and regression. So it's, it's an option to use its data, its output too. So uh, in, and we used it uh, at, until now we used we use it in mitochondrial uh, data. We took 8,000, more than 8,000 mitochondrial uh, genes uh, by organisms and uh, we were able to generate trees with it. Uh, Plastidio uh, genes, more than 4,000 and uh, we took all the NCBI uh, bacteria database uh, from at the time, it was more than 10,000 sequences, and we were able to uh, process um, all the sequences at the same time. The last one were all the gene, uh, sorry, all the um, genomes from a bacteria. So it was a lot of data, and uh, we were able to process it in two hours and to generate a huge trees uh, with it with a certain accuracy. So um, at the moment, the tool may be uh, executed using on terminal, uh, Linux or Windows. Um, it requires the MATLAB comp compiler to run because uh, this was the, uh, this executable version is a MATLAB version, but we already have R and Python versions to use as uh, source code. Um, this standalone version is very, uh, custom customizable. We have a lot of parameters you can use to to apply. I'll show you uh, in a few minutes how we we uh, we uh, set the parameters in the tool to use, and we can use in amino acids and nucleotides. Uh, it may be just genes or even uh, the entire genome sequences. And uh, this uh, matrix we generate in the end can be used to um, to represent our uh, group of sequences. So it, it's not not our only goal is not the the phylogeny, but to generate this matrix, uh, this representation matrix, can, which can be used to other, uh, which can have other uses. So. Just, uh, unfortunately, I, I was expecting to show you in terminal how to use the tool, but uh, I had a problem here in my computer and I couldn't. So uh, I'll just bring you a print screen uh, for the, the, the terminal version, but it's really simple to, to execute. Uh, if in Windows or Linux, you just have to uh, execute this uh, instruction. Uh, you just need to pass the instruction sweep, space, um, the name of the path, you, the path you need to, to, to execute, and then you need to pass those parameters, generate tree or some other parameters I'll show you later. So uh, these will give you the, give you functionality on the store. In this example I'm showing you, I'm, I'm asking the, the software to, to generate the, the matrix, but I'm asking to not generate the final phylogeny tree because uh, this uh, gener three step generation is very slow i think is the uh, the slowest in the process so uh, you can uh, execute the tool without it and then generate the tree in other softwares if you want to 
um, to run this tool in Windows or Linux, you have to install the MATLAB compiler. So it's a version 2012 from the MATLAB compiler. I, I put the link here to download if necessary. And uh, it works, it's required for Linux and, uh, and, and Windows, okay? Then uh, here I, I'm sh I'll show you in practice uh, in, a few, uh, in a few minutes how to use it on MATLAB because it's the version I developed. Um, it's it's really similar to the version, uh, uh, and, sorry, it's really similar to the way we can uh, use it in terminal. Uh, you have to just instruct it to call, call the function sweep and set, set the parameters uh, as this example here. And when you are running in MATLAB, uh, as you are in a development environment, the tool is uh, prepared to not generate the disk files because uh, the tool will generate a lot of uh, outputs that which can be which is the goal when you are using the standalone version it's to use the uh, the, the files but when you are using the application uh, you may not need it so the tool doesn't uh, generate it but if you want to generate this these files on disk you have to set this development uh, a variable to zero, so the 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 IDE will uh, recognize you want to save the files in disk even if you are running inside MATLAB. Um, well, the parameters uh, I told you the tool accept are a lot of them, so uh, I'll show you some. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have a web version, which will make our life really easier to use because there are a lot of options. But at the moment, you can use a uh, sequence type. You, when you are using amino acid, it's the default version. It's not required to inform you are using amino acids. But if you are using peptides, you have to inform the software uh, to avoid errors in the, the processing. Um, then you can use also, uh, then you can inform the method you want to use. Uh, we provided some. Uh, which uh, the main one is binary, but you can use the prime and count options too. In our tests, we verified that the binary matrix is enough and faster than the others the, than the other methods. Um, you can inform the project matrix. Uh, this project matrix matrix is the basis of or, of the the process because it's the orthonormal pro, uh, matrix which is used to um, to transform our binary data. So uh, by default, we give you a one for amino acid and another one to nucleotides, but uh, you can generate new ones to your project. This is a random matrix. So that's the reason why we are delivering it with the software because uh, it, to, to compare multiple trees, you need to use the same matrix uh, but you can generate your own and make all, all your analysis in your matrix. Um, in the paper, we have some explanation on why this is important. And if you are interested in know more, you can take a look at the paper. And uh, the mask, it's an important factor too. Uh, we suggested here, there's an error here. <laughs> I, we, I have to adjust uh, the uh, presentation, but uh, the, the default mask to amino acid is 11011, and the default mask to nucleotides is four ones, uh, three zeros, and four ones. Um, we tested those masks and we verified that this is the faster version to use uh, the faster and the better version of masks to use in software. But uh, we verified that for genomes, uh, it may be better to use a mask 555, five ones, five zeros and five ones. It, it had, had a better performance for entire genomes. But for genes and uh, nucleotide sequences, those two masks uh, I'm providing you here are enough. Then we have some uh, additional parameters such as, as how to save the binary matrix. It's usually not saved because you, we usually don't, don't use it before the projection, but it may, it may be saved if you request to. 
if we want to generate the tree, because it's the, as I told before, it's the um, difficult, it's a difficult, it's, it's the slower step, I can say that. So uh, you can generate it or not, it depends on, on your use. And if you want to generate it, you can decide if you want to, which um, distance method you want to use, maybe Euclidean experiment or cosine, uh, or I think Pearson is available too, but we, in our tests, Euclidean was the best performance. And you can uh, use two different clustering types too. Uh, we left sec neighbor join, which is the most common using today, but we suggest to large trees, such as trees with more than 10,000 sequences, uh, to use ward because uh, sec neighbor join is too slow for that uh sizes of uh, uh, for that amount of data and you may have problems generating the tree when you use second neighbor join because of the tree characteristics so ward may be a good option when you are working on uh, a huge uh, group of data okay so basically i put some links in here uh, to download it uh, it will be available to you later and now i want to show you a bit of the tool uh, I think I, I'm not sure the screen, I have to sh share another screen. Uh, another screen has been shown to you or it's the same? Right now we see your presentation. In my presentation, I think I have to change it. So, yeah. um, let me see, uh, I'm not sure. Now I'm showing the entire screen. Oops. Uh, no. I think you can only screen show one monitor if you have more than one monitor. If that's what you're asking about. No. no now we can I... see the MATLAB. Now we can see the okay. MATLAB window. Perfect. Perfect. So um, in, in this MATLAB window, uh, I'll show you how to execute it. But it's basically the same process you have in um, in terminal in Windows or Linux. Uh, there, there's a little difference in the syntax, but in the end, uh, you have the same output I'm showing you in here. The, the tool has a log, uh, which shows you each step execution, because it may be a slow execution, and sometimes you may think it's uh, locked or something, or, or you, in fact, it's running, but it's uh, just a slow process, depending on, the, on how much sequences you have. But uh, what I mainly did, here was present the path from the file. I, I used one file, but the tool accepts a folder with multiple multifastas. So uh, the tool at the moment accepts only FASTA files, but in the future we will use GeneBank uh, files too. And it mainly, uh, you can pass the parameters as I showed before. And after the execution, uh, it will execute really fast because I think it uh, it's not a huge file. I think there are, let me check, uh, 41 sequences in here, but for bigger files, it may take a while to execute. And in the end, uh, it will generate in a folder, as this example here, uh, in an output folder in where your the software is installed, it will show a list of files, uh, of output files. All of them are, des are described in the um, uh, readme uh, file from the application. Okay, so it will execute it in the same way in Linux or Windows or uh, in Python is in NR, they are a bit different because they don't have the, uh, that much options, that much options, sorry, in uh, this Python and R version, but uh, the two, it's uh, really similar in all the, those platforms. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know if you have any questions. I, I, I didn't give you much of time to, to ask things, but please feel free to ask anything. Does anybody have uh, questions? Uh, I wanted to ask if, uh, so this is like in MATLAB right now, do you think you're going to port it in some other languages in some near future maybe? 
it, it, it I'm is obviously already... looking at Python here because, uh, not obviously, but I'm a very huge Python fan, so I'm looking in this direction. Yeah. But maybe uh, something else, R, 100% inside of R or something like that. Yeah, we have already a version in Python and in R, but mm -hmm. uh, they are not as complete as this one. So you can execute it, but you don't have all these options. It's a more basic version of it. And I think in this year, they will develop a similar version of this in web as a web uh, platform too. So uh, it will be available in a lot of platforms, I think, this year. If no other questions are coming, then thank you, Light Mariana, for the presentation and for volunteering to present. Yeah.